Hello everyone, this is Chase and I wanted to welcome you to my first site swap tutorial. In this one we're going to be talking about um, excited state site swaps and how to make them a little bit more interesting than what you've probably already seen and are already familiar with. So to get things started on this we're going to go to our generator and just generate sort of a random excited state five ball site swap so just make sure everything's okay we got five balls I don't want to throw anything higher than a seven here we're gonna go for a period four site swap and we want to only show the excited states and we'll show the transition throws as well in there asynchronous pattern okay looks good run the generator got a couple interesting patterns here um, in this case, we're going to go with the 6671 as sort of our base pattern, what we're starting everything off with. Um, but by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to pick a whole bunch of different patterns that you can use. But to start things off, we're just going to punch that in, the pattern, status. That's sort of step one of this process for designing an advanced um, excited state site swap. So, most of you watching this have probably already done an um, excited state site swap before. So, we're going to try to spice things up a little bit more today by actually throwing in another site swap in the mix. Now, you can probably notice that we have an even period here. It's period four, so we're not changing sides, which is boring. So, we're going to throw in a period three site swap right inside of this thing just like when you're doing ground state site swaps you can take one site swap and attach it right to the end of another site swap and you've got another valid site swap in this case the 672 happens to be in the same excited state it's excited by a 6 just like the other pattern that we've already entered here because of that we're allowed to slap on a 672 to the end of it and the pattern is still juggleable. Now you've got sort of the same spirit in the pattern, but now you have a nice little transition there that's allowing you to change sides, making it, in my opinion, a lot harder to follow, even for other jugglers who are watching it. And it might cause some people to, at the very least, be curious as to what the heck you're doing, because this looks way different from your standard 744 for sure. Okay, now as far as actually performing this thing though, we're going to have to find a way to first transition into the site swap and second we have to transition back to that cascade to make this thing successful. Just hang with me, I uh, recorded the audio separately from the actual video. Okay, so we've got the five ball cascade, and we're juggling that for a set number of catches, right? To transition to the excited state, we've got to throw a six. So we just throw that in after that. And then we're going to type in the excited state site swap that we just found, where it's a period seven. So we punch that in. We'll do about three rounds of it so we just notate it that way okay now we're on sort of a quest to find the best transition back into the ground state that we can possibly come across we want to find one that makes the pattern look really cool we don't want to just transition back to the ground state by doing something like a boring multiplex that makes us stop the pattern or throw one high to go back to the cascade. I consider those to be boring transitions. I want something much more subtle than that that will catch the viewer off guard. So in this case, we're going to actually search the generator for a ground state site swap, but we're only interested in the site swaps that begin with a six. The reason for this is because in the excited state pattern, right, it's excited by a six which means while you're juggling it you're in the exact same situation that you would be 
if you were juggling a ground state site swap that started with a six, it would just be as if you're on the second throw of that site swap. So the method that we're going to use here is we're going to use a ground state site swap that begins with a six, but if you eliminate the six, then you can just use the remainder of that site swap to transition back into the ground state. In this case, we're going to use the 66751 for reasons that you'll see in just a second. So going back to our main pattern bar, we're going to punch that in. And lo and behold, if we take away the original 6, then the transition back is just a 6751. But here's what's cool about it. Our excited state pattern had a 672. So when you juggle this, you're throwing another 67 just like you're in your regular excited state, but instead, aha, you're fooling your audience because this 67 is going to end with a 51 that transitions you right back down to the ground state like that. And I'm going to let it cycle through the pattern one more time so you can see just how subtle of a transition back to the ground state this actually is. By the time you realize that the transition's taken place, um, the guy's already back in a cascade. Right there. In my opinion, it's a lot more smooth and without adding a whole lot more difficulty you just get a really cool looking effect and um, it's pretty cool particularly with the juggling crowd a lot of people have a hard time following what's going on because they're so used to seeing 744 or 97531 just sort of the cliche site swaps and just for one more example you can do this with any combination of excited state site swaps you want in this case one of my favorites the 9551 you throw in a 672 and you get to make the thing an odd site swap which is much more interesting and once again you can throw in a similar transition back to the ground state so that does it for this particular site swap tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more